we recording? We're yep. recording. Let's go. All right. Mm. Well, we're back doing this. It's me. It's me. It's that D A V I D. I haven't said that in a while. That felt good. Wow. David Coyer and my good buddy Phil Giovanni. We're two guys talking wrestling. We only have one episode of this out. It was mm. back in October. We've been talking about trying to do it again. And yesterday's Elimination Chamber pay per view made it seem like this would be a good time to finally get back and do it because man do i have some strong opinions on yesterday's elimination chamber pay-per-view and phil i'm sure you do too yeah yeah we have a lot to talk about and if you don't like where people just bash on wwe get the just get out please get out it's gonna happen here it's gotta happen we're not gonna straight bash on wwe but it's no it it i I love wwe i i've always been a wwe we established this in episode one i was a wwe guy i Mm -hmm. you know i wasn't a big AEW guy it's starting to slowly shift based on everything that has happened in the past couple months just because i it's wwe is just getting so predictable and they're just pissing me off Mm -hmm. Uh, but let's um Let's kind of just jump right into it. Good old Elimination Chamber took place yesterday, February 19th, in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which, I mean, we could just have an old episode on that, on how dumb I think it is that WWE continues to go to Saudi Arabia, but that is not what we're going to get into um but they're halfway around the world a nice saturday afternoon which was nice i did enjoy Mm -hmm. that starting to watch some wrestling at 11 a.m on a saturday when i had nothing else to do and isn't that just a tad bit sad um but let's get let's just kind of i don't even we don't have background on it let's just give our opinion on the pay-per-view um starting with did you watch the pre-show did you watch Rey mysterio versus the miz no i didn't either because i was I, I forgot that it started at 11 o'clock. So the fact that that was probably on at like 10 30, I didn't watch that match. I know Ray Mysterio yeah. won, um, yeah. which then also set match. up, which, which also set up though, it set up the interview um, after the fact where the Miz is just like, I need to make a phone call. And I kind of want to talk about that for a little bit because there's obviously the rumors that Cody, Cody Rhodes from AEW fame, um, who recently just did not renew his contract with AEW, there's basically all but confirmed by many news sources that he's heading over to WWE. There are some people freaking out that Cody Rhodes might be the tag team partner for The Miz. What are your initial thoughts on that? And if you hadn't heard that yet. Yeah, so I did. And what I was, I heard that was speculation. The bigger name, the, the name that I think could actually be his opponent or his his tag team partner i've been hearing logan paul a lot lately that's the one i i mean if it's if it's not cody logan's like the second name after that um which is interesting to say the least i mean yeah he was oh what pay-per-view was he at was he at the rumble no he was at mania last year he was at mania okay he, yeah, yeah, yeah he was with he was a part of the Sami Zayn kevin owens match for some reason yes yes what for yeah that's I forgot about that. Yeah. But I mean, if honestly, it's going to be a draw, whether we like it or not. If it is Logan Paul, it's a draw. If it's Cody Rhodes, we have a full timer there. I just don't, this is, I know this isn't about Cody, uh, this whole thing. I we could do a whole thing about Cody. Um, I don't know that he would go back to WWE, honestly. I, that's my biggest gripe with that. I, I don't know if I could believe that. He's going back after all the bashing he's done about them and, and how much he dis- he didn't get along with Triple H. But from what I've heard, like, it's so shocking to me. But I did see a tweet that Cody was on a flight to Saudi Arabia uh, Friday. So, like, I don't know what to believe at this point. Anything can happen, which is good. Finally, WWE isn't predictable. Like, <laughs> there's something up in the air there. That's the one thing. Yeah, it's making it nice that it's a little unpredictable on what's going to happen there because that will be big no matter what. Like if Cody Rhodes comes, even if people know that he's probably coming, that's still going to be a huge pop when he finally, if if he ends up coming out. I did hear Logan Paul too. I just wanted to see if you, your thoughts on Cody first. With Logan Paul, I can't stand either of the Paul brothers. I hate, I hate all of that. Um, yeah, I hated that he had to be a part of the Sami Zayn Kevin Owens match last year, even though he didn't really do anything until afterwards, where he just got stunned by KO. 
but still it yeah it was just pointless and like i feel like sure i think they have fans but does he really have that many fans that bringing him in as a celebrity will raise numbers for wwe i i think they're catering to that pg audience again even though i wouldn't say logan or logan paul is not pg but but I think they are banking on that. A lot of his audience is ch- our children. So I think that's, Younger that's people, kind yeah. of, yeah, that's kind of the hand in hand thing, the whatever middle school age, probably like those guys are probably watching, but like, again, I don't think WWE really benefits in the long term. That's the problem is that their short term mindset is just all that they're in. They don't think about the future ahead. Hence why we had, why we have Bobby as champion and we have part timers keep coming I'm going to get sidetracked. I don't like it. <laughs> End of the day, I don't like it. Regardless, Cody is cool. I don't want I don't want Logan. I I don't want Cody in that tag team match because he has bigger potential. Like he's a main event. He's a name True. that he's a main event name that they need now that they really don't have many main event names. Um but they do, I think. I think they do. They just can't. They aren't using people correctly. I think you could put Kevin Owens, Rollins. Le- I mean, Lashley is obviously just champion. Um, Randy Orton could be on his own again. Riddle could be on his own if you break them up. Like, I think they have so many people that, that, that that's, could be headliners. But that's five people. You can't, like, uh, you can't, uh, you can't just have five. five top names. Like, Co- you add Cody into that bunch, and that's, okay, now you're starting to get a little bit more. But it... Mm. They don't have I mean, many Edge, people at the top. AJ Styles. I think they. Like, I, that's. I think they could though. I just. I think they misuse so many people, and with how many people yeah. they cut too, that had so much potential. Oh that yeah. It's. It's not like they haven't had talent. It's either they misused them, cut them, or injury. I guess like Shinsuke was just injured for the last couple months, and why his title reign was so fucking garbage. <laughs> Sorry. Another uh, thing I hate. Uh, but the reason I think I like Logan Paul in that match is the Miz does such a good job with celebrities. Um, oh yeah, he, I mean the Miz is just that good um, that he does. Like last year, Miz Morrison, uh, Damian Priest, and Bad Bunny. Now, Bad Bunny carried that match. Don't get me wrong. Great match. Uh, no, Honestly. Bad Bunny is fantastic. But like, I think the Miz is the right guy to use for those kinds of um, matches with the celebrity matches. And then um, so putting him with if you're gonna have logan paul in there Mm. okay yeah put him with the miz and put him in a tag team match with the mysterios because those three people aren't really doing anything right now um so it's just like okay yeah sure i like Mm. that don't put cody there because that's a waste of cody and then you're also bringing cody in as a heel um and i mean i i didn't like cody rhodes in AEW like at all like from day one, I just like he's the goody good guy. Like it, it just wasn't doing it for me. Now I will pop when he comes back to WWE because it'll get interesting with the whole AEW oh, yeah. rivalry. But come on, like I don't know. I, he just I feel like Cody doesn't have that star power. But if he's coming back to WWE, oh heck yes, put him in the title run uh, or in the title yeah. chase. Yeah, no, I agree. He should be a title contender right off the bat, which. Come to think of it, yeah, he probably shouldn't be in that tag match. Um, the whole heel face thing, I go so back and forth on because I didn't mind Cody. I didn't hate him. I didn't love him. I thought he was all right. I loved my favorite match I've seen of his was easily the ladder match with him and Sammy for the TNT title. That was one of the best ladder matches I've seen probably since the uh, All Out last year. That was like that was insane. Um, I think Cody's got the skills. I just think he needs. I agree that it was, he was too much of a goody two shoes. Him and he's like, his, uh, you know, making his father proud and this, that, and the other, whatever. Um, I just embrace that. Embrace that people wanted to hate you like Roman did. Roman tried so long for, to not be a heel. And look what he did. He finally, they broke, they made him a heel, and he is one of the best super. He is the best superstar in the WWE right now. And I don't really think there's a close second to him, truthfully. So I think I Seth's think pretty. I, I I think Seth is kind of getting up there as his star as power recently, is, is right. There. As of recently, yes, oh, I yeah. think so. But like before this last, like uh, what was it, Messiah Seth? I didn't care for that too much. I think that little period was a bit of a bump. 
I think they could have done more with it. And the fact that they, yeah. they kind of, I feel like they fumbled that. Uh, wait, who was I just listening to? I just, I was just listening to someone. And I heard something. Um, oh no, I was, I think I was talking with uh, my boss at work. Um, what they could have done with that Messiah, Seth Rollins. And I think what they were maybe going for a little bit before COVID hit was giving him like 12 disciples. And then at one point, having one of them betray and just do a full like you know oh Seth like Rollins jesus. is jesus thing uh. and i like imagine if they had had the actual like time to do that and build that up and i feel like they kind of just fumbled it because of covid that would have been um, pretty good i like that or do i think a, like, we're a getting sidetracked a little bit yeah i was just gonna <laughs> go do a whole seven deadly sins bit like i don't lean into that oh, anyway yeah, yeah. Let's get back so, into this. So that was the Rey Mysterio defeating the Miz by pinfall. Eight well, that's what we were talking seconds. about. That's what we started <laughs> off with. And then we got to Cody and then we got to heel and wow. face and we got to blah, blah, blah. Wow. Second match of the night, opening match of the Elimination Chamber main card uh, was Roman Reigns in a Universal Championship match uh, with Goldberg. Now, no one wanted to see this. No one wanted to see this. No one really wanted to see this back in 2020 um, when it was supposed to be at Mania. Uh, but it was going to happen. Uh, mm -hmm. And it, no one wanted to see it happen. No one wanted to see it happen now. But this, thankfully, is the last match that we will most likely see of Goldberg in WWE because his contract is up. His deal is over. This was his last match. But... What a job. Like he did, he did the job. Like he six minutes, he taps out or technical submission, technically, to Roman Reigns in the guillotine. He puts Reigns over, and I think it was needed because now Roman Reigns has defeated every universal champion in history. Oh wow. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Beating Goldberg, course... he has officially beat every universal champion in history. That pisses me off because it reminds me that Goldberg beat the Fiend for the title. That really bugs me. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 I like Actually, like that no, 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 no. The Fiend was the WWE champion. Oh, no, never mind. Nope, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, no, Goldberg beat the Fiend for yeah. the Universal Championship. And a yeah. horrible match. And a hor That was the beginning of the Fiend's end. God bless him. Anyway, yeah, I, I thought the match was fine. Again, it was inoffensive, nothing crazy. I like the counters, even though Goldberg and Lesnar are in the same, which they have five moves that they can go through competently. Um, the couple of the, the Goldberg sold pretty well in this match. I'll give him that. He definitely was not on the front end of everything. It was more like if he got a move in, it was a counter off of Roman, which I appreciated because it looked like Gold Roman was going to squash him from the beginning. Like he just had so much offense all at once. Goldberg, or Goldberg did hit the spear early on. But um, I don't know. There were a couple of times where I was like, is he going to break out of this, out of the triangle, out of the, uh, what are they, do they have a name for it the yet? Guillotine. The, front, the guillotine. Um, there were a couple of times I genuinely thought he might've broken out of that. And I was kind of like, oh, how are they going to finish this then? But then it ended up, like you said, with him, uh, you know, blacking out, basically passing out from the, from the pressure. It was, it was fine. It was, it was it, a solid it was, match. It was good. It didn't, you know, again, it wasn't a match that people really wanted to see, but now Roman can say he's beaten Goldberg. There was the whole like spear versus spear thing um that they at least had built up in the past so now it's just mm -hmm. like and now it's you know roman has cemented himself as the greatest universal champion of all time which there was before this match there was no doubt about it either but yeah he i mean he now he's beaten all of them and the thing with roman and we can talk about it maybe a little bit later once we get to the men's elimination chamber match but you have to have the right person beat Roman, which is what they've been doing. You know, when you have a 500 plus day reign mm -hmm. and you have Roman not lose in his, in his title reign, at least in a singles match, um, you're building him up to whoever beats him to, to push him, to, to catapult them to the moon. Sorry, ignore um, me. I'm trying to get out of the sun. So it's not super distracting, but I'm here. Sorry. But uh, but it's just like 
what I'm scared of is that they're going to choke on this and they're going to have Brock win at WrestleMania. I 100% think that's going to be the outcome. I don't see a way in a match where Brock doesn't win because at that point, I really have been talking with my buddies about this and I don't know anybody that could realistically beat Roman for the title. As of who's in WWE right now, I just, I don't think anybody's better than him. I don't think anybody's more deserving of the title than him right now, honestly. But at some point, it's this is going to get stale, and you have to get you have to get out of this this title reign at some point. You have to show some sort of weakness, and we really haven't seen even a chink in his armor once. I don't think there's been matches where it's been close, where there have been some good offensive maneuvers against him. But truthfully, I just I don't think Brock's the guy. You I don't think you should put it on a part time or anything. You you can't you can't give it to Brock. You you, no. you can't have Brock because I mean you already look in the past what Brock has done. Like Brock at one point was built up to who's gonna beat Brock. Whoever beats Brock is gonna kind of that's who they're and it was Seth who beat Brock at um whatever WrestleMania that was like two years ago. I'm I'm starting to the fact that they don't put the numbers in the logos anymore it just makes it really hard to figure out which WrestleMania it is. Did you also notice that the WrestleMania font is different now? I was looking at a picture of all the WrestleMania signs that ever It has exist. been for a little bit. Well, well, what I noticed was the M usually went over the top and the W stretched out over the bottom or vice versa. They didn't do that this time. This is the first year that, mm. that, that those two lines are not a part of it, which I never realized. Because like I said, I only noticed when I saw them all lined up together. Yeah. And then it popped up uh, yesterday when I was watching the show and I was like, the fuck is this? And it, I don't know. I don't know if it's just me noticing and being nitpicky, but like, Really weirded me out that I they like changed this year's it up. logo. I like this year's logo. That's fine. Yeah, I think it's cool. It's, it's it's decent. Um, but yeah, so like they did that with Seth, and then so now it's just like okay, you need to have. But and then Seth didn't really have much of a title reign after he be after he became the Beast Slayer. Like yeah. it was just kind of I like again. I don't even remember what happened during it, if I'm being honest. But it's just like so. Hmm. But then you also had Brock, which everyone is in agreement. Brock shouldn't have ended the streak, but Brock ended the streak. Even Brock has said that he wish he hadn't been the one to end the streak. Um, people have thought that the streak shouldn't have ended. Um, I agree. So I but, know why I should but I, cause I mean, and that was a big reason why, why I'm just like, okay, Brock ended the streak. Now they're going to build Brock up huge and whoever beats Brock is going to be like the next top guy. Mm-hmm. Had, still haven't really like had anything from that so it's just like they have to do it right this time with roman and their dumb asses at wwe are going to probably have brock win at wrestlemania and then they're gonna look like you're gonna lose everybody like yeah. uh like they try and throw these swerves or like they want to like try and be creative and like you know you and i and we talked about this on episode one we're both fans of, you know, something to wrestle with Bruce Pritchard. We love listening to him talk and stuff. Just the way that he even talks about the past, there's times where I'm just like, okay, where he'll be, he's just like, yeah, fans just like, they think they know better or they think like, and then they'll, the WWE, like they'll come out with like a little bit of a story or something, or he'll like try and defend what everybody thinks was a poor booking decision. And yeah. it's just like, I don't care how you're defending it. It's still stupid. Like I get where you're coming from. So it's just like, if Brock wins at mania, I really want to know what their defense would be. Cause it's just like, no, no, No. we're smart. Like, cause that's the, the, the type of fan that there is in today's day and age is we are smartened up to the wrestling business. People sit and they try and analyze this stuff. I sit and sometimes just try and analyze the stories that are going on and stuff. But mm-hmm. it's just like, so it's just like, I like to fantasy book in my head, like, oh, here's how I would do it, blah, blah, blah. And in no way, shape, or form does Brock winning at Mania make sense. And I'm just so scared that they're going to have him win. And now we still have two months until Mania or whatever it is, six weeks until Mania, right? Yeah. So there's time for them to, let's see what happens now that Brock won the title, because they might throw someone else in there. But man, I hope we get something. Yeah. What what really worries me is that it's a title for title match, I think. Oh, yeah. So you're coming out with either one 
yeah, I'm going to say it's a positive. You unify the titles. Just have go back to WWE champion, and we get rid of the brand split. Maybe that's what – you don't like that? I'll let See, you finish, I, but I'll tell you why I don't like that. So I'm just – I am so sick of this brand war that we that they try to push that doesn't make sense because Survivor Series is always the one night of the year where the brands can compete against each other, but then when the Usos feel like it, they'll jump over to another brand who has a title and just kick the crap out of them for no reason. Or somebody will jump over – like Rollins going back over – uh, back and forth to whatever brand to fight Roman. And then, like, it, it doesn't make sense at this point. For kayfabe reasons, even, it doesn't, it just doesn't logically make sense. There's no reason to have a brand split. We need to have everybody, instead of having, uh, oh man, I, I think we talked about this in episode one as well. Um, the most repeated matches of like, it was like Shinsuke and yeah. Corbin or whatever, over and over again. Like, we need to get out of that habit. And the only way to do that, I think, is to shake everything up. So if you unify the titles, I think that opens the door for a, for an actual unbrand split or a brand unification as well. I think that's only going to lead to better things. I, regardless, I think Brock shouldn't win as well. I think Roman as double champ makes elevates him even more, even though he doesn't need it. That's just insane. Then maybe he defends one title at a time. Maybe you just unify them. Honestly, I, I think the unification if that le- if that leads to the brand. I keep wanting to say unification because it's the only word I think of. The unbrand split, we do that again, bring everybody together. I just think that makes the product a little bit better overall and less predictable when it comes to what matches we're going to get. So I was gonna, I was gonna try and save this for a little later, but it's I'm happy that you brought it up. So it's funny because I was just seeing this on Twitter today. I saw a bunch of people ganging up on a guy saying why a brand split would be dumb, and their their defense was perfect and i would say the exact same thing go watch raw and smackdown from 2012 to 2014 just go watch any raw or smackdown from 2012 to 2014 that is roughly around the time that i was kind of becoming a fan it's when they introduced and branded it raw super show i remember that because guess what i would watch raw on mondays i would watch smackdown on fridays it was basically watching the exact same show <laughs> twice a week. Yeah. Because See, it would be yeah. it would be Randy Orton in a match on Monday, in his storyline on Monday. And then the thing on Friday is he wouldn't even have a match on Friday. It would be a vignette about what happened on Monday, his match on Monday, his encounter on Monday, basically replay a speech from Monday. So same 20-minute opener from Monday Night Raw – and then he would come out and have another promo at the end of the show. There would maybe be about a half hour to 45 minutes of actual wrestling on a SmackDown. It doesn't work. It, 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 it is not what WWE needs right now because guess Look what? Look at AEW. They don't have a brand split. They don't have a brand split, but guess what? They don't have the same people wrestling on Wednesday and Fridays. It's True. almost, it's almost like it's, for a while, CM Punk was really only wrestling on Rampage. Mm. He'll show up on Dynamite, but he's wrestling on Rampage. Mm. Um, I get they don't have a brand split, but they also don't have a roster for a brand split. I don't. I don't think they have. They don't have enough people. And now that well, actually, that's not oh, true. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I did see. A, I did see a fantasy draft where I did see a fantasy draft where they kind of did like if they did a brand split, and it actually was kind. It was pretty even actually. Um, so I take. I do take that back. But they know how to build their stars and people who aren't stars already. But <laughs> but it, I I don't mind. Well, I do mind. I do mind the title unification. I hate that because I feel like they just write themselves into a corner with that. Um, because unless you're going to unify the title, which I don't like that. I like having a champion on each show. Um, mm. Again, unless they're going to have like a run in or something or something happens, it's going to be very difficult to get one title off of a person or something like it's yeah but brand split it's not it dude it's not the way i personally here's what i would do if you're going to do the brand split make these other titles that we have that wwe seems to forget about like the u.s title the ic title make them worth something again biggie was a great was is the last 
really good Intercontinental Champion I could think of. I like Sami Zayn's original run where he made it like, oh, I'm the actual, uh, I'm the actual IC title. Like they made that interesting. It wasn't as prestigious as as it was maybe 30 years ago with like Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and whoever held it back then. But make it worth something. I think if you actually give that title some substance rather than treating it like a 24 seven title. I think it could really work and also just shorten down raw. Just please, just shorten raw. <laughs> that, like, just we will bring titles. that up on every episode until it happens. Shorten <laughs> raw, <laughs> god <laughs> damn it. <laughs> We're gonna be the ones to do it. We're gonna be the ones that are gonna bitch enough about it. And they'll be like, fine, shut up. These two guys just keep being annoying on their YouTube show where it gets them like six viewers, but damn they just, we <laughs> they just set the title of our show basically. Let's have the name, two guys. <laughs> We're getting the recognition from WWE already, baby. Oh. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I honestly think if you unify the titles, make the other uh, second secondary titles higher up on that list of, of prestigiousness in the current day, I think it would work out really well. I do see where you're coming from, that the shows will get will might get stale. Also, we're super off track again. But um, No, this, I mean, I was planning on bringing this up eventually where I wanted to talk about a potential brand split or uh, unsplit. Uh, yeah. Well, especially because the title of a title at Mania. I, I yeah. Know. I think it, it's a good idea, but I do see what you're saying about that. It, I just, because I, I just don't, because then when you have that, then that pushes WWE, because they, again, they've done it in the past. If history, WWE history tends to kind of repeat itself a little bit, um, you then would just start getting the same people on both shows week in and week out like you would have roman opening the show you'd have two or three guys coming to talk to roman and then it would lead to that kind of going and then friday it would just basically be a one hour recap of raw and then an hour of here's smackdown for you um so i because that's what happened that's but it's also now they're just trying to fill three hours of monday night raw but hey guess what don't have three hours oh but then people aren't gonna get enough tv time fight for it make it a good product but nobody wants to sit through three hours of garbage (laughs) no 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 i I had something in my head i was just about to bring it up and i just oh i forgot about it anyway probably because probably the women's chamber because we've we've gone that's actually that's exactly (laughs) no it it wasn't but yeah uh (laughs) women's uh Elimination Chamber match, 15 minutes and 45 seconds. Both Elimination Shit. Chamber matches were under 16 minutes. That's wrong. No. Not, that, not that you're incorrect. Oh, okay. I was about to that, say, it's just like, the, no, no, no. I I've, I've saw this on multiple places. Yeah. The fact that it was under 16 minutes is awful. <laughs> That's the, that is my biggest complaint about the Women's Chamber, is that it was too short. I blinked. And next thing I knew, Dewdrop wasn't in the chamber anymore. And I'm just like, what happened to Dewdrop? Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Rhea hit her with the riptide. It was pretty cool. What? what oh, see, it? I think I was missed that, that spot. Like, that's the thing. I look down for a second, look up. Next thing I know, there's like three people left in the ring. <laughs> yeah. I was pretty sure. I, I don't know. I think that's what happened. But anyway, <laughs> but it, it was a good, it was a good match. Yeah. It was a it was very fine. good match. Very Started good. off with uh, Nikki Ash and Dewdrop uh, in the in the ring, um, and you had Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, Alexa Bliss, and Bianca Belair um, in that order coming in. And I mean, everyone looked good. You got you had Rhea hitting a couple spots, like you said, looking good. Dewdrop, I have not really ever been a fan of Dewdrop, um, especially after her Rumble match with Becky. It just seemed pointless. Yeah um she was looking good and i think the fact that they just had to introduce her with eva marie even right that's what mm-hmm. yeah, i see i already forgot her name because i don't care um yeah. but the fact that they introduced her with her i think just ruined like kind of plagued her from the beginning and giving her a name like dewdrop um like what well, was what was her name in nxt piper nivens and piper nivens yeah like what what was the matter with that? That's a Vince McMahon name right there. Not yeah. Dewdrop. Yeah. Piper Nivens is definitely better than Dewdrop. Or just call God, it Piper. Goddamn pal. Yeah. I name you Dewdrop. 
dude, uh, drop. That's good shit. She's she's <laughs> she's shaped like a like a drop of water. So we'll call her the dewdrop. That's you didn't good. know that's what he said. <laughs> that's good shit. That's such good <laughs> shit. Uh, <laughs> Oh, uh, we worship Bruce Pritchard on this show. Uh, <laughs> um, a little too no, much, every, unfortunately. Everyone, everyone looked, yeah, like everyone was looking good. And then Bianca, I saw stuff on Twitter where people were saying that Bianca has been buried. Uh, Bianca's in the Raw Women's Championship match at WrestleMania. Bianca got a lot of good spots in that chamber match. Bianca looked fantastic. I have been mm-hmm. a Bianca Belair fan since her since I started watching NXT and since she killed it in NXT. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah. I, I personally, I think this was my favorite match of the night, which I don't say often. Like if you had told me going into this pay-per-view that the women's elimination chamber match was going to be my favorite match of the pay-per-view, I would have called you crazy. Um, But I, I think it was my favorite because like it was exciting. It was quick. Yeah. But it was exciting. Um, yeah. I, if I could just watch Bianca and Rhea wrestle for the rest of my again. life. Again? Yeah. I'd be cool. They're phenomenal. I think they're both, I think they are my two favorite female wrestlers at the moment. They're my top, definitely my ooh, top 10 favorite superstars in WWE at the moment, male or female. I think they're both incredible. Um, I, I would just love to see that. I wanted that, those two to be the actual two last in the match i didn't expect alexa bliss to be the second the last second to last either i was gonna bring that up i'm happy to see that she's kind of getting back into her singles groove and stuff like that Mm -hmm. it has become clear that wwe has booked her into a corner with making her the disciple of the fiend and they're kind of just trying to wwe their way out of it by sending her to therapy and being like Hey, you're Alexa Bliss again. Um, even though she had the swing in her chamber and stuff like that yesterday, like it's just, but hitting a twisted bliss uh, from yeah. the top, like that was dope. Uh, mm-hmm. That was sick, yo. Um, <laughs> as the kids say, hello, fellow children. <laughs> oh my God. Now I feel like I'm talking to Bruce Pritchard. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> um, but everyone, like, yeah, I, Nikki A.S.H., I think she got to drop the superhero stuff because it yeah. was cool. And then they screwed her over by only making her champion for a day. And now it's just kind of like, I think she just needs to become, I think she needs to make that superhero arc to become, to live long enough to see herself become the villain. And... <laughs> take the mask off and become the psychopath she was in nxt again um and do her versus it's gonna be her versus Rhea at wrestlemania like clearly which will be a good match because they've been i've been enjoying the storyline um especially like their little bit that they got in the chamber um it's obviously not my favorite thing but it's like Mm. the only thing that they can have for those two right now i think if nikki can go back to her psychopath character that she was before she became all goody two shoes with alexa when they were their tag team um, oh, yeah i i think that might save nikki again i don't like the almost superhero because guess what you're not a superhero you're not going to become a superhero anymore because you are now a bad guy uh yeah i my biggest problem with that whole gimmick was how it started because it was supposed to be i'm almost a superhero I haven't won the title yet. I haven't got my opportunity. So I'm pr- going to prove myself and I will become a superhero. And within like one month's time, she was champion. Now, given it was only for a day, it was only for a day. But that is something you need to build slowly. You need to show the, you need to show the people, not tell them. You need to show them that she is trying to become better every day. Maybe she loses a couple of matches in the beginning, but works her way up the rankings and proves herself and then gets the title, then maybe she gets screwed within a day. That's fine. But I think from the get-go, she was ruined when she got the title within like three, four weeks of becoming ASH. After that, I don't get the whole turn on Rhea. I don't don't know if I missed something in, in kayfabe, but it just seemed like they were having a match, and all of a sudden she was like, nah, fuck you, I'm sick of you. 
I'm, I'm, I don't need you anymore. Like, can you clarify that for me if you know? But because I, so, I just I don't get it. If my memory serves me correct, they lost the titles, mm-hmm. and then they were still a still a tag team, and then they came out to do like a state of the tag team address is what I'm going to call it. Like, I think they just kind of, and I think it was just Rhea's just like, Hey, you know, we don't have the titles anymore. I think I just kind of need to go on my own a little bit. Um, And Nikki was just like, but like what? And then Rhea was just like, yeah, like, I don't think it was anything like ill will. Like they were clearly trying to set up Rhea as the face. And then Nikki kind of went psychotic and just attacked her and stuff. And it was like, no, we're supposed to be this tag team. And then that's what happens when you have one women's tag team in the women's tag team division. And then now you want your, and one of that one tag team has one of your biggest women stars in it. And you want her to be a singles wrestler and not be in a tag team with an almost superhero. Um, what I think they should have done is like you said, like kind of do a little bit of a training, like, okay, let's work my way up to be this superhero. Um, mm-hmm. And then instead of waiting five months, six months to have a run in with Nikki, almost superhero and Molly Holly in the Royal rumble match, you have Molly Holly train Nikki almost superhero to become a superhero. That would have been great. Why not have a superhero train you to become a superhero and then help you win the title? Yeah. I, that, that's logical. We should be, we should be writers for WWE. Seriously. You think, I know, dude, Shane Helms still works there. You think he would have pitched that. He, the prime superhero would have known that. Even that, not. yeah, like not even Molly Holly. Like I think Molly Holly would have been cooler because everyone loves Molly yeah. Holly, and you have a woman superhero training a woman superhero. Um, yeah, but even if you have Hurricane, like he does everything he can to just kind of make those little snap appearances at the Hurricane, which mm-hmm. everyone pops because everyone Love again, loves <laughs> loves Hurricane. Uh, but yeah. It, there's so much wrong with the WWE. It's not good. <laughs> but WWE, if you're watching this, I still want to work for you. I will change fuck my you, ways. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> See, I won't. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, we, woo. Yeah, WWE, woo. If you give me a job. Um, anyway, so yeah, Bianca Belair going to WrestleMania. Uh, to Wouldn't have been any other way. It's only clear, like... It it almost it, it only seems right that Bianca is going to go over, right? It has to be. You, you, get, you she have gets to screwed. again. She gets again. Screwed, what, you have to. Seconds. It's the clear and yeah. obvious choice. And I just listened to an episode of Something to Wrestle with where Bruce has admitted it was talking about the Hornswoggle being Vince McMahon's son, where it's just like everyone knew it was going to be Mr. Kennedy. So what did they do? They messed with it at the last second just so it would throw people off. So guess what? Mm-hmm. It is clear. Actually, here let's do this first psychology for you it is not clear that bianca is going to go over i think becky's going to win you got him here's the thing they might do that they legitimately (laughs) might stupidly do that as much as bianca so predictability is not always a bad thing with wrestling you can expect an outcome but the ends or the means have to justify the end not exactly. only justifying the means you need to be able to make sense like we knew so i know uh we're, we're, i'm gonna get ahead of this i'm not i don't want to talk about it much yet lita and uh becky lynch we knew becky was gonna win but we wanted a quality match out of it and that's what we got that's all i'll say about that match for now i think uh, you just needed to have something to look good in the meantime even though the ending is obvious so i really really hope that they just let bianca win at the end of the day, it just makes let, sense, just she's get so her. talented. She's phenomenal. It's, like Becky doesn't need the title. No. She doesn't. Becky doesn't need the title right now. Hear me out. I'm thinking of this now. Asuka comes back soon. Says, I want to face Becky to prove that I can take the title from her since Becky handed the title to her. Which is Make why I wanted Asuka way. back at the Royal Rumble. Yes. Make it a three-way, though. Bianca, Asuka, Becky, that's a phenomenal match right there. You have your three best performers, the future, the present, 
but I guess, and also the present because Asuka's still goaded and, you know, Becky's amazing. I, I want, like, I was texting our friend, our mutual friend, Connor Fredlin. Um, shout out to Connor. Um, <laughs> gang, gang. I was texting him during the Royal Rumble saying that I want Asuka to win the Royal Rumble because Asuka never beat Becky Lynch for the title. And now yeah. you can have that. That's a storyline that wrote itself. Perfect. I popped when Ronda came back. And let's, we'll, actually, that's the next match. I popped when Ronda came back. And then once everything kind of went down, I kind of realized, why did I pop? Why did I pop? Because yeah. now we got Naomi, 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 uh, and Ronda Rousey against Charlotte Flair and Sonya Deville. And in the taped SmackDown segment uh, on Friday, this past Friday, uh, Sonya was just like, oh yeah, by the way, I changed the stipulation. Ronda Rousey said in an interview that she could beat me with one arm tied behind her back. So we're going to have one arm tied behind your back. <sighs> and it's just like, and then of course, oh, the swerve of the century. Oh my gosh, no one saw this coming. Sonia Deville's arm wasn't actually hurt. Gasp. Yeah. What a heel. What a dastardly heel. Which that's the thing. I love Sonia Deville too. And why couldn't we have just had Naomi and Sonia Deville at this but well i guess they're building it for wrestlemania so i see that we're gonna get that at mania i'm really looking but forward to that had match. that match already on smackdown two weeks ago they had naomi and sonya deville and they and she beat her clean that should it's okay just be done it's a, it's the, okay. the story never made sense to begin with we don't need this to we want conclusion. naomi as champion that's all that we want <laughs> yeah do you remember when this started and sonya was picking on her and they were like why are you picking on sonya she was like well i just don't like her it was like that was all we got from that. Like, what the fuck? Come on, we don't need a we don't need a logical conclusion for an illogical story. I just <laughs> just drop the fucking thing. Let Naomi be great because Naomi is actually a really good wrestler. And she's gonna be, be good. She's hopefully gonna be chan- See, she deserves. I saw this and I loved it. She deserves a Kofi Kingston style moment to win the. I think you're gonna say a Kofi Kingston style run. <laughs> I was gonna say like, well, how dare you? What did she do? <laughs> you, you jerk! <laughs> Why would yeah, you wish she, that upon her? <laughs> no, I, I hope she gets a Kofi Kingston style win where it's yeah. just like, which like that's the thing. It should have been Sonya. You know, it should have been kind of like a, a not to the extent because nothing will ever beat this. A Triple H Daniel Bryan. St- style story where it's just like you have the authority figure you're picking on them putting obstacles in their way telling you no then you have at elimination chamber because don't do a, a daniel bryan triple h thing at wrestlemania 30 but do at elimination chamber okay hey you have to beat sonya to get your title shot and then boom naomi yep. charlotte flair at wrestlemania perfect that's fine that's fine. Charlotte also does not need another title run or any more title time as champion. They they talked about her potentially losing and then winning another title back because that would make 16. I kind of like that. I wanted to say I really don't like that because I don't think Charlie needs the title anymore. But just to say she tied her dad in what I five like years that. too like that's the thing right. too i saw it it's 16 in five years which means you also lost it, it 15 times it, so. what, that's what i always think about it it's like <laughs> oh he's a 16 time champion it's like guess what he lost the title 16 times too <laughs> right yeah that's that's always a little silly to think about i always like the reigns better than the actual yeah title ones like if we look at rome who's a better champion roman or Oh shit! I was gonna say Punk, but he also held the title for like 400 days. But like, that's the thing is like they held the title for that long. Anyway, yeah, I. I oh, but I like you, know. you also look at it as, you know, that's a that's a, an incredible accomplishment that you're that that a champion that many times, especially that short mm-hmm. amount of time. But it's also just like holy crap, she's been in the title scene for that long. Now again, she's carried the women's division because she is a consistent worker, but. It's also, I'm tired of Charlotte Flair. Yeah, like, she's getting me the same treatment, even though she's a heel, it's a little different. That's why I stopped caring for Cena after a while. 
when he was consistently just winning the title, losing it once to Randy or Edge, and then winning it right back, like I was burnt out on him within a couple of years. And that's kind of where I'm at with Charlotte at the moment. I I I get that she she's a great worker. I can't say she isn't. That's just lying. She's a great promo. She's awesome. But you don't have to be the champion in order to be a top person in a promotion. Like that shouldn't be that way. I should say you shouldn't be seen as the overall like. Whoever the champion is shouldn't be the sole uh, person that they lean on all the time. You could all, should also be able to go to your mid cards who can be pushed to the top. And unfortunately, WWE does not have a good habit of doing that. So here we are with Charlotte, Charlotte as champion for the 15th time. So I don't but know. But then also now this brings us to the point. So we, I, you know, I didn't like Ronda Rousey in her initial run. I wasn't mm-hmm. a big fan. I, I Again, I popped when she showed up because it's like, this is actually really cool. And then I've never been, uh, I, I've i never thought she's a good wrestler. Um, her her style, I feel like she's sloppy, um, which, I mean, that's easy for me to say. Um, Ronda Rousey could kick my ass in three seconds. <laughs> um, but it's just like, I just, her mic skills are just so, because bo- like, you know, when you're in UFC, it's not scripted. So if you just want to sound tough, you just talk and you're, if you're good on the mic, you're good on the mic. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to sound tough while reading something scripted, it sounds like you're trying to sound tough reading something scripted. And that's what Ron, every time Rhonda opens her mouth, I go to, I go to sleep because it's just, it's just like, this is just painful to listen to. But you look at it, you know, we talked about the Becky match. We talked about wanting Oscar back. We talked about um, Bianca getting pushed. I mean, so there's three people right there in a woman's title scene. So that's enough. Like, and even that, three people in a same. I hate triple threat matches. So even if you move Oscar over to Charlotte, okay, boom, now you have two title matches. Ronda mm-hmm. isn't needed. Ronda was needed for that star power back in her first run because it was a woman's division that was kind of boring and stale. You needed Ronda in there to make it interesting and get people interested. Mm-hmm. She's not needed right now because look, can you tell me who wasn't on this card that really should have been on this card and should be in the title scene right now? Unless they're injured, no. Sasha Banks. Oh, oh. But wasn't it something about her vaccination status? She couldn't come over to Saudi Arabia? Even if it is. Even if it is. She's still not in the title picture. You know who deserves to be in the title picture over Ronda Rousey right now? Sasha Banks. Even if we had to... Like I said, I hate triple threat matches. If you gave me Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, and Asuka on one night and you gave me charlotte flair naomi and sasha banks in a triple threat match the second night Mm. shut up and take my money holy crap (laughs) like (laughs) i would watch those on repeat man like yeah and now you're giving me stale ronda rousey versus repeat scripted promo charlotte flair like charlotte flair is you know be all <laughs> I'm better than you say I'm better than you repeat like mm-hmm. it, it, that's what she, like you you said she's good on the mic she's good on the mic because she says the same promo over and over and over again it worked that's three years ago it's style style over substance it's totally it's, Cena promos basically yeah like yeah. And, it, and it yeah so it's just it man the woman scene is just not my cup of tea right now and the fact that you really i mean i guess now you have two matches set up for mania um Mm because i I guess but then we're also gonna get naomi versus sonya and we're gonna get Rhea versus nikki ash so we're getting those and unless you toss in a oh because then again now you got zelina vega and carmella what are they gonna do are we gonna get a tag team match with some bs tag team at wrestlemania like no one wants to see that I could do without either of those two as well. Because now you're going to get, like, Liv Morgan. We forgot to mention Liv Morgan. She looked great in that Elimination Chamber match. But now what is she going to do? Like, Ronda Rousey was not needed right now. No. No, no, no. And I'm ashamed to say I popped at the Royal Rumble when she came in. 
I'm ashamed. Damn you, David Coyer. <laughs> Moving Damn on, you. final women's match of the night. Second longest women's match of the night. Third longest overall. 12 minutes, 15 seconds. Becky Lynch p- defeated Lita by pinfall to retain the Raw Women's Championship match. <coughs> Lita's almost 50 years old, and she wrestled better than a lot of people who are wrestling currently. Yeah, and I, I, she has not missed a beat. Not in the slightest. And the one thing that I was upset with, because when she was coming back for the Royal Rumble, it's just like, oh, Lita might be here for WrestleMania. Because she has never... What was it? She's never won at WrestleMania, but I don't think she's ever had a singles match at WrestleMania before. Really? I think if I'm remembering correctly, Lita has never had a singles match at WrestleMania. They've never done Trish and Lita at WrestleMania. That bewilders me because I feel like that's something you have to do. That's wow. I mean, wow. I really and, hope that's not true. And so it's just like sad. I was really, you know, every I was really hoping, hey, let's put, oh my gosh, if they put her in a tag team match with Zelina and Carmella, I'm going to be pissed. Um, but it's just like, I was just a little upset because they kind of, it seemed like they kind of used Lita just to be that star power draw in Saudi Arabia, which I texted my boss that and he's just like, well, duh, that's what they do. They I mean, that, that was the posters and- all over. They brought Goldberg and Lita back. Like, <laughs> how um, desperate are they? And so it's just like, because the way she kind of did her curtain call, it almost makes it seem like, like she's just gonna be like that was her last one. But I really hope she gets put into something good for WrestleMania. Um, but that I, I, you know, I said that the the women's chamber match was my favorite of the night. This is a close second, almost kind of tied for my favorite match because it was good. Like, again, two fantastic workers. The story they were telling that Becky grew up idolizing uh, Lita and it, the, the whole line that she said on Raw the other week, um, there is no Becky Lynch without Lita. And then, uh, what was it? And then there's going to be no Lita because of Becky Lynch or whatever, like, it was on Raw a couple weeks ago. I just butchered the line. But anyway, um, it's fantastic, the story they're telling. Like, it was great. I, I yeah. loved it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they both came out looking really good in the match, even though, obviously, Lita took the pin uh, and lost. Um, she didn't lose with the disarmer, which I think was interesting. I like that she's not always going to that, like, how um, – uh, I would say Roman uses the guillotine more, guillotine more often than not. I do like that because uh, I think it makes the superstar that taps look weak, which is why nobody's really tapped to Roman's guillotine because that makes him look strong still with being like, oh, I'm not going to give up. You're going to have to kill me before I tap. And so Lita gets the same effect where she doesn't have to tap. She doesn't have to tap. You know, you get pinned, you're assumed you're like knocked out or physically damaged to the point you can't move. So that's just a little bit of the ending that I really liked. Um, I think Lita hitting the Lita salt with ease was awesome. I, she did it perfectly. I think her, her selling has always been a, an odd point to me because Lita, I actually believe is getting the crap beat out of her. <laughs> the way she reacts to different stuff. I can't describe it in words. Just if you watch a couple Lita matches in a row, I genuinely think someone's beating the shit out of her. And I can, like feel bad for a little bit. And it's well, and, just that good. And that's how fantastic. Like I was watching um, SummerSlam 2006. I was, I don't know why I decided to pick this match. I was just kind of in the, the mood HBK for it. Hogan guy. <laughs> uh, no, that, 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 Is that, isn't that, that, that was 2005, wasn't it? Oh, maybe it was. 2006 is, uh, it's DX versus the McMahons. Oh, uh, yes, 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 yes. DX versus so? No, this was just the tag team match where Regal, Finley, and uh, Mr. Kennedy come out, and then Big Show comes out, and then that's right, yeah. Um, but mm. it just kind of you know you watch Shawn Michaels; he's my favorite of all time, easily. Uh, but like, there's times where like the Hogan Michaels match where he oversells, but then there's times where like he'll get hit, and you look at it, and just the way his face is, where it's just like 
dang, like he actually look like looks like he's getting hurt. And like, this is actually killing and the way that he even takes the hits. It's just like, oh, yeah. wow. like, I know you're taking it in a way where it makes it hurt less for you, but dang, that looks like that hurts. Like, and you it know, just, you know, if it looks like Vince's offense is doing something, he's doing a great. <laughs> great job of selling because that those are the matches that always stick out in my mind is when anybody wrestles Vince it's like how do you react it doesn't matter how he's doing how are you selling his moves and Austin and Michaels always the two greats at that well even uh even Shane because you know Shane does his little dancing and he does the little like put his punches depending on who he's wrestling they miss (laughs) like they just miss with Sean I was watching him today because I've seen that match probably like four or five times. Um, I'm mm. watching it today and it's just like he hits him and it looks like he's hitting him. And if you yeah. can make Shane's punch looks like it, it is hitting you and hurting you at the same time, you're fantastic. So bringing us back to the original point, Lita, yeah, no, she's yeah, didn't skip a beat. And that's the thing. Like, I just, I hope she gets a WrestleMania moment, like just a little one last or even if she gets like you know one last run like if she kind of comes back and she gets another quick run um i think that'd be cool uh, yeah uh if i could say one more thing about this yeah, match yeah, i yeah. really enjoyed it's the fact that a lot of becky's wins lately have been coming by a dirty pen whether it's holding onto the tights holding onto the rope there was nothing dirty i can remember from this match it felt like a clean back and forth the entire time and a clean finish like, oh, she did put her feet on the ropes once, but Lita kicked out of it. So, I mean, again, getting caught cheating there. And it's like, I actually have to beat her 100% this time. And I think, it, again, it makes both of them look good. Lita put in a lot of effort for a 13-minute match, you said, I believe. It was like just uh, under 13, 12, something like that. Yeah, oh, okay, so just over 12. That's still a good long match for somebody that's that old and been out of the business for how long now? Like, and and Beta, and Beta, Becky beats Lita with uh with again clean in a long time and sold her moves just as well i think both of them came out looking phenomenal if this was lita's last ever match i think it's a great send-off because she did phenomenal oh uh, yeah no absolutely one one match i did miss actually was the drew McIntyre oh, hang on. Sorry. versus i need Matt to Cavalos. i need to move a little bit i'm blinded by this light <laughs> and it's horrible in here so oh, good, if i could good. just take one moment I will I'll talk just, if you want. But <laughs> no, I'll just quick bring up the Drew McIntyre versus Madcap Moss. Nine minutes. How is Madcap alive? How is Madcap alive? That's really he took an Alabama slam that he like killed his neck. Um, I mean, Michael Cole kept selling it as, oh my gosh, like he landed on it. Like there's like they're selling it like, oh, that was supposed to happen when everybody and their mother are just like, no, no. Oh, no, you saw wasn't. Corbin the way he reacted to that. Well, that he and, was just squeam, squeam, that squeam he, so quick. He did such a good job, though. That's one thing I saw was that he immediately pulled Madcap out of the ring. Didn't affect oh. anything with the match, anything like that. But he pulls him out to give the ref a couple seconds to ask Madcap how he's doing. That's a but. That's yeah, why that's you, can, you as much as Corbin's character right now is one of Awful. the worst things in wrestling right now. I love him and I hope that I hope that he I hope I hope please WWE give him something good. Yeah, I'm not gonna just give him back Corbin his crap. lone his lone wolf, Baron Corbin. Honestly, please give him back his do. old music. Yes. Here's, <laughs> here's what you can do. Here's what you can do. Realistically, make him oh god, sorry. <laughs> this is such a cluster. I should have planned for this. Um so Make Corbin poor again. He say he loses all his money. Shout out Chris Jericho here, by the way. I got an AEW event. Um, and make him poor again, and make Madcap think that he's better than him. Make Madcap the heel because we all felt bad for Corbin a little bit, not yeah. completely because he was. Still it was one dead. of the best things going on at the time. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So make him make make Madcap a heel, or make keep Corbin a heel. And being like, you wouldn't be here without me, and blah blah blah. And then Corbin looked, and then Madcap looks better because Madcap's actually a really good wrestler. So like, and he's just again, got a dumb character. Yeah, just make <laughs> them both look good, make their personalities good, and people might want to see them more often rather than giving them X Pac heat like they always get. 
and bring him bring back people who can actually make unique entrance themes where when uh, someone generic comes generic rock songs where when oh. someone comes out you know, like i heard ricochets yesterday and i'm just like wait where's that match why is that not on here ricochet had ricochet? a match yesterday ricochet, i didn't i don't think so ricochet we was on tv a- and, who was we, he uh, against? I don't remember any Ricochet match, honestly. Ricoch- I, or was that? No, I'm thinking of Friday. Never mind. I'm thinking of Friday Night SmackDown. I was watching SmackDown on Friday. Oh, um, okay. I was watching SmackDown on Friday. That's where Ricochet came out. Give him a but, push. Give Ricochet a push for Christ's sake. He doesn't have his cool music anymore. No. They gave him generic crap. Always. Always <clears throat> I, I had this conversation with Fredlin. Um, shout out Connor Fredlin one more time. Um, after the Royal Rumble. Remember when the Royal Rumble used to be cool because when someone's music hit, you knew exactly who was coming out and you popped? Yep. When You Think You Know Me played in 2020 and we all simultaneously crapped the front and back of our pants? (laughs) (laughs) I'm not going to ask you how you crapped the front of your pants. I just won't. I refuse to. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but yes i i completely agree these generic songs these generic rock songs in particular are just horrendous this year's Even royal rumble jam. this year's royal rumble i'm pretty sure they played some people's songs twice and it's just a tad bit different because like there were people who were coming out where i'm just like didn't i hear this song already and then it's another you know and then it was the mid card rumble because let's be real, there were only like three people who were believable to actually win that rumble until Brock came out. Um, but that's we're past. I wanted to do an Thank episode on how bad the God. rumble was, but I was oh. didn't have time to do that at that point. I don't have the mental energy. I can't do that again. <laughs> I can't talk about that stupid shit show again. That was, had, the rumble's one of my favorite events, and it just uh, got ruined. Speaking of stupid things, let's move on. Oh, don't tell me we're talking about the tag title match. The WWE made four people fly to Saudi Arabia to do nothing. The Usos and the Viking Raiders flew to Saudi Arabia so the Usos could come out and injure Eric. Which, let's be real, having Eric thrown, or having Ivar thrown on top of Eric has been done before. Eric is not hurt. That's just, that's just, they decided, hey, we're going to do this and you're not going to wrestle unless they were like strapped for time or something. That's the thing. I read that they weren't even cutting time. It was, that was a pre-planned event. That was like going. That was going to happen the day before or something. Like, oh man, they should have attacked. God. They should have had like a pre-taped thing where you attack them backstage yeah. or something instead of making them fly to the kingdom of Saudi Arabia to not have a match. And I feel so bad for the Viking Raiders at this point because the first time I saw them on pay per view, I think, or well, the first time I really paid attention to them was a couple of months ago. I can't. I wish I had uh, looked up the pay per view beforehand. But I remember seeing them coming out, and I was like, who the hell are these guys? Like, they don't look interesting. I mean, the Viking Raiders, what the hell is this? And then I watched them wrestle. And they are incredibly talented performers. I, uh, Ivar is the big guy, correct? I'm so Ivar's bad at the tag team. Yeah. Ivar. Ivar, for being a big man, extremely athletic. Um, it's, it's Stu Grayson, Right. That's Ooh. who he used to be known as, uh, the other Viking Raider, the smaller guy, Eric. Eric. Was no, they not... were always they were always tag team. Who the hell is Stu Grayson? I don't know. <laughs> it's another guy I think I've seen in WWE. I know who Stu Grayson is. I can't remember what it. I can't remember who that is though. <laughs> I don't know. Regardless, they are both phenomenal wrestlers. So last night I'm watching it with a buddy, and I'm like, "Oh my god, can't wait for this." And he's like, "Why do we care?" And I'm like, "Because they're good performers, and the Usos are one of the best tag teams in wrestling." period right now honestly they're both incredible and then we we get our we get blue balled by seeing nothing but that i don't care if we've seen that match before they're both great wrestlers they're both two great tag teams just let them do their thing don't squash them just god 
I don't understand. I don't understand the decision at all. It just doesn't make any sense to me. What, what does that do for either of them except look, make the fucking Viking Raiders look like chumps? Exactly. Yeah, no, it was dumb. It was just a dumb tag team match. Um, look at that a match. Right there. We had, to, we had to take a break quick there, and I'm just going to edit it to where it's me saying that. So this is just going to look... Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Professionals. Uh, we anyway, went to college we, for this, by the way. Oh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> media degree. Uh, mm. The main event. Do I even want to talk about this? Can we talk about everything before Brock comes out? Because I thought that was pretty good. Like, so, I liked everything before Brock. Yeah, right. no. So, it, it, you know, you start out in the match. So it's Brock Lesnar, Bobby Lashley, who is the champion, who beat Brock at the Royal Rumble. Again, man. If we had a Royal Rumble episode that we could just talk about how stupid that Brock versus well no 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 it was well, not stupid yeah, was the say. Brock versus Bobby match was not stupid they had it it was gold and then yeah. Brock had to come out and win the Royal Rumble and they ruined it ah anyway mm-hmm. um Bobby Seth Riddle AJ Austin Theory Brock Lesnar uh, Austin Theory starts against Seth Rollins, which I'm just like, heck yeah. I like yeah. Austin Theory. Same. I hated Austin Theory when he made his first kind of main roster debut. Um, what that was like the that was the night after WrestleMania 2020 or whatever, right? I believe Wasn't so. It back in 2020? It was definitely was during the on... Whoa. Wasn't, it, wasn't it kind of during the COVID era? Didn't he he didn't Unless I'm thinking of someone else, didn't he come up and he was with like he was like Zelina, he was with Andrade and Zelina as like on um, um, as like Zelina's like second client. I don't know. I'm I not. Don't. I'm gonna remember. quick. I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. I'm like Google do. machine because I don't Google remember Austin Theory. Bef- I don't. Remember NXT Austin and Raw. Theory. Here we go. Here we go. Theory Theory appeared on the March episode, March 30th episode of Raw as an associate of Zelina Vega, establishing himself as a heel. Theory teamed with Angel Garza and Seth Rollins, where they defeated Kevin Owens and Raw Tag Team Champions, the Street Profits. At WrestleMania 36, Theory, Theory teamed with Garza to unsuccessfully challenge the Street Profits for the Raw Tag Team Championship. The following night on Raw, Theory and Garza were once again defeated by the Street Profits in a rematch for the titles. So he had a main title or main event or main roster run. Then he went back to NXT where he was a member of The Way. And it was okay. during that that I started to like him again. Because okay. when he made yeah. his debut, I'm just like, what? Who, who? I didn't know who it was. I didn't know if I was supposed to pop or not. Or like, I had no idea what, like, I'm just like, who, who, who are you? And it was sucks because it was... It, during Sorry, COVID. it was during covid like why make a main roster debut before wrestlemania in covid yeah bianca got lucky with that honestly but she no she uh, came out the night after wrestlemania wow it's like everything because the- she because it was because oh, wow. that's how they had the tag team rematches i'm pretty sure was bianca came out and it's like hey street profits are still yeah. the tag team champions yeah and bianca's is like hey yeah on the EST right. at WWE, and okay. it was instead of NXT. And wow, was was that Austin Theory tag team match uh, against the Profits? Was that on the pre-show? Because I don't, I mean, I believe that it happened. I just have no recollection of it, like in the I don't slightest. Remember. I don't remember. I couldn't. I, I couldn't he, see I, that. I don't remember him wrestling at Mania. I thought he came out the night after and then aligned himself. But... Yeah. That has to be a pre-show thing then, because I don't usually watch the pre-show, to be honest. I know that's kind of (laughs) bad, because there's always a match on it, but nine times out of ten, that match was pretty much... I think Jeff Hardy was on the pre-show match, like, two or three times, which sucked, but But, I, again, just didn't watch But, so, yeah, so, like, I didn't... Back to our original point, I didn't like... I'm starting to like Austin Theory now that he's back, and he's doing, like, his character's good, and WWE, yeah, with, with this match have shown that they are all in on Austin Theory. Mm-hmm. All in on Austin. Because he looked great. He, he did. looked fantastic. And yesterday. he made to the final two. Well, that and so that's that's impressive. the thing. So so after him and Seth, like so him and Seth go at it, they do a really good job. Yeah. Then Riddle comes out. Um, Riddle's in the match for 10 minutes and five seconds. 
Um, and then who was it that was who threw who into the pot? I'm pretty sure Seth threw Did Seth, Seth threw theory. theory. Seth yeah, threw theory, yeah. and Bobby gets hurt. He's going through concussion protocol and it is unable to compete. Now, my initial reaction watching this live, I'm just like, you're kidding. You're doing this, and now you're kicking the champion out of the Elimination Chamber match. I thought it was a work. Same. And I'm just like, and it's just like, okay, put somebody else in. Like, give me somebody else right. in. Right. See, that's why I was expecting Cody Rhodes to jump in. Exactly. If they were going to do a debut, I was expecting either Kevin Owens or Cody Rhodes. Those were the two people I only could have accepted in that spot. Exactly. But, but oh, it's just man. like, well, I, but then to get to the point, for those that don't know, which if you're watching this show, you probably thank you, know. <laughs> yeah, thank you for watching the couple of you that are probably watching this because I told you to watch it and asked you politely to watch it. And if you're making it this far in the episode, thank you for watching this long. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, shout out Kevin Bell. Hopefully he's listening. Um, Thank you, my, Kevin. Bu- my buddy Kevin. Um, but like it, it okay, they're actually to the point, to the point after that. Thank you. He's actually hurt, and they've known for yeah. weeks since the rumble, they've known yeah. for weeks. So then why bring up or why build up Brock versus Bobby in the chamber? Why not have Bobby relinquish the title? Why not have the Elimination Chamber match be for the title for the new champion? Because you're going to have Brock win it anyway. Spoiler alert, Brock won the championship. Again. But you're going to have... So why have Bobby in the... Or if you're going to make Bobby hurt, fly to Saudi Arabia and get kicked out of the match he'd never lost the championship why not put a kevin owens in there to make the match more interesting why not put a cody rhodes in there now now the only reason why i see not putting cody in there is if you are signing him and that they have signed him why make him fly all the way to saudi arabia because in reality because yeah. in reality is there a big now there's a big pro wrestling market in Saudi Arabia. Obviously, is there a big AEW market in Saudi Arabia? Do they all know Cody Rhodes, or have they all forgotten about Cody Rhodes in Saudi Arabia? Now that's not that's kind of a rhetorical question because I have no idea. There probably is an AEW market. If you like pro wrestling, you're probably going to try and watch AEW. Um, right. I do think that's a fair point, though. Is he as much of a draw outside of the company? Because they did go with two classic people at this pay-per-view in Goldberg and Lita. So they're, they are trying to pull as much. I think now everyone in the U.S. would have popped watching on Peacock yeah. or in Europe oh, yeah. watching on the WWE Network. And like everyone would have popped watching it. It's just a matter of do they want to. And also, are they going to make Cody fly halfway across the world to debut? Like, so right. I, I get not having him in the match for that sense. People want him there, and that it's a logical point to debut him in that sense. But that's why you don't book Elimination Chamber in Saudi Arabia in the first place. Uh, but yeah, put a Kevin Owens in there. Don't just oh, Bobby's in concussion protocol. He's out. Okay, right. well, now everyone knows Brock's going to win it. Because even with Bobby in the match, you probably knew Brock was going to win it. But it's that believability that, hey, maybe, just maybe, Bobby has a chance. Or you're at least rooting for Bobby kind of to retain because they don't. we don't want the champion versus champion Brock and Roman at Mania, which we're getting. Yeah. But then... And once I'm done with this rant, then you can talk for a while because I'm. Not, this is a very long rant. No, but, I know you've been waiting for this. But man, why squash everybody? We got that at the Rumble. Brock yeah. comes into the Rumble. We get it. I'm Brock. I'm angry. I'm going <laughs> to throw everybody out and Brock's in the ring for like 20 seconds and then he wins the Rumble. We saw that there. Now... I thought it was also dumb 
that they still because I thought maybe Bobby was going to come back from the fact that they still had him in there in the in the pod reveals. And then I thought it was even dumber that they landed on his and then still did nothing with it. Like, if you're going to have it where it's Bobby's and, oh, he's supposed to come out five, Brock's just going to have to wait. That's dumb. You know who else thought it was dumb? Brock Lesnar. Because apparently him breaking out of his pod, I just read this before we started recording, was real. Yeah. Which is just like, hey, it's a, like, and it's like, gosh, it must be good to be Brock Lesnar because he can do (laughs) that. Yeah. And Cause yeah, like she, I thought it like I thought it was cool that he broke out, and I thought like I script for sure. scripted. I think I thought it was just a little annoying, but the fact that I found out it was a shoot, it's just like oh, that's awesome. I love yeah. that he did that. Now that ad like that's fantastic. Like that's Brock being mm-hmm. Brock. But then the fact that he destroys Seth, he destroys Riddle, he destroys AJ Styles. You, okay that that doesn't benefit anybody the only person i wouldn't even say brock benefited from this match he won the championship he didn't get any character growth he didn't get anything it's ever what everybody was expecting the only person who got something out of this match was austin theory yeah and he looked like a million bucks he took an f5 off the top of the chamber which is fantastic nutty which is fantastic but let let Seth get some offense in. Tell the story of Seth versus Brock. Seth is the beast slayer. He, they have history. AJ Styles, he's gonna have another title run. It's all Cash but you. it's it's all but happened at this point. Like it's inevitable at this point. Let him get some offense in on Brock. That, and then Riddle. Riddle's on the on his way up. Riddle was supposed to win the Rumble apparently. Yeah. which has now kind of been disputed a tad bit. Um, but it's just like, build people. And even at that point, if you let these guys get their offense in, then you give us the annoying crap of Brock coming back and it's just like, ha, none of that affected me. Let me come kick your ass now. But give it at least, like, it's the, it's the, second longest match on the night but it was only 14 minutes and 55 seconds yeah it wasn't even a 15 minute match yeah and again that was my biggest problem with these matches both both of these matches were just they were robbed of any uh, of being good because they weren't given any time and they could have had the time if they actually cared about who of building up winners, like you said, if they put any time into these stories of building up each of these guys, it would have been so much better, but it was all so apparent from the get go that Brock was going to win. There was no way anybody else was going to win. And like you said, my biggest thing was when they had Brock Lesnar or uh, sorry, Bobby Lashley up on the, uh, on the graphic, when they were doing the random, random pod selection, I swear you put Kevin Knowens in there. He and Seth Rollins are already friends, so you make that the two heels versus the one somehow babyface Brock Lesnar. And here's the thing, side tangent, love Brock as a babyface, but they never treated him like a babyface. He never had matches like a babyface. He just acted like one in his promos or anything like that, but in his matches, he was just still a monster heel squashing everybody. They they know how to book, like, they have brought him in as a babyface. The buildup, mm-hmm to Brock versus Roman one. Well, I guess that's more like Brock versus Roman six, um, whatever yeah. it was, which I, I never, I never got to see that match. Um, I was in my transition which, to moving down to Texas when they fought uh, last fall um, after, you know, Brock debuted at SummerSlam and then they had their uh, match. Oh, the one that got canceled because Roman. Oh, they COVID. never ended up having it. Did they? Yes. They, that was supposed Roman to be at COVID. day one. Yeah, I, I was, then, I thought then they, Brock but I thought in. they had one. Not since Brock came back. Not this time around, no. Are we sure? I'm Give pretty sure bit. about that. Yeah, double check, fact check me, I'm please. A, but I, I'm pretty sure pay-per-view. they have not faced each other since. Uh, like, you may be uh, right, but I thought there was. They've had a match probably two years ago when Brock was on that monster run where he had the uh, WWE title with Heyman. And uh, when Brock was in the Rumble and he got knocked out 16th by McIntyre. No, they, they, they had a match at Crown Jewel. 
in October. They did? Like this am past I, October? Am I not? Am, no, that's that's the one that got canceled because of COVID. And then they, no, that was, they were at WWE Day One is the one that got canceled because of COVID. Oh, shoot. They were at Crown Jewel? Man, my memory yeah. pretty bad. Because I didn't get to watch that because that was October 21st. I had just moved down to Texas, so I didn't get a chance to watch it. I started watching that pay-per-view and never made my way through it. I watched The Edge versus Seth Rollins and the Hell in a Cell. Um, Roman defeated Brock Lesnar by pinfall for the WWE Universal Championship. Because again, that's what I'm saying. D- Roman in this title run has beaten every former Universal Champion because he beat it. Bro- he beat it. He beat Brock. What the fuck? I, I like, got right? no memory of that. Exactly. What the hell? It was built like, and that's the thing. That's what happens when you have pay-per-views in Saudi Arabia. No one wants to watch. It's true. Those Saudi shows <laughs> are pretty shit. And this one was not different. Like you build up these huge matches that people want to see. Yeah, but they don't want to watch it in Saudi Arabia. Anyway, I'm so flabbergasted by the fact that they wrestled in October and I have anyway, no memory it, of it. But Sorry. it's just like, yeah, you build up Brock as this face. But what WWE doesn't know how to do, and I'm not even sure if it's fully their fault, maybe Brock doesn't know how to do it, is all he's ever done is wrestled as this big beast. He's the beast incarnate. But they keep calling him that too. If you don't want him to be the beast incarnate, it's just Brock Lesnar. Because he's hilarious. Yeah. He's a great face. Everybody loves it. But it's starting to get to the point that they're trying to book him as the face. And he's still just doing heel stuff. Mm-hmm. Still acting the like, I want show. what I want. I'm Brock Lesnar. And it's just like, okay, I guess. It's just annoying. Right. And, the, and that's the whole thing. That's my whole beef with Goldberg. You can have Goldberg. I believe, even though Goldberg doesn't put out the greatest matches, it's more of a symbolistic, uh, uh, a thing of symbolism where it's like if you be Goldberg, it's pretty sure that you're a you're a damn good wrestler. So like Roman beating him, sim in the, in the, in the way of that it was a symbolism of yes, you are a great wrestler. Um, let's have you like you said a whole universal title thing. That's fine. But when you have him come in and he goes, I'm next without any sort of proving himself beforehand with Brock just inserting himself into the rumble well well he goes up to the last and goes I want my rematch and that's it and all of a sudden he's in the chamber whereas everybody else had to qualify for the match like these are not baby face attitudes or characteristics they are all heel characteristics but you just make him a little funny or goofier and all of a sudden and you put him against a heel a dominant heel like he used to be and all of a sudden we should be cheering for him that doesn't make any sense. What point does, where does that come from? And that's the thing, like, it's really starting to become a blurred line, which I do, I hope that's not what WWE is going for. Cause Please it's, don't. cause there's times where Roman's cutting a promo and you're kind of agreeing with what Roman is saying, or at least I am. Like, well, here's the thing. I think you can agree with a heel, but they also need to take it up a notch to that uh, just slightly unrealistic. Because a heel should be believable. It shouldn't be like um, Carmella when she had her seven rematches against Bianca. And it was like, I deserve this. And it's like, well, no, you don't. You didn't prove anything. Now, if somehow she got screwed in the previous match, be like, okay, I could see you won in a rematch. But there has to be some logic, but it needs to be amplified in their minds to where it's like, okay, you're losing me. But I could see why you feel this way. Whereas Brock, it's just, I want it, give it. And that's yeah. it. And yeah, it, it, and now we're back to our original or our conversation from way back. They're doing a title unification match, and I hate the like, even Becky two belts. I loved it. I loved that Becky finally got her moment and that she was more than deserving to have that. I, I don't even fully remember how she lost her SmackDown title. Becky's? Yeah. She must have lost it in an actual match because she only gave the Raw no, championship no, yeah, away. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, so it's just like at that point, uh, you yeah. have her wrestling on at both shows, but at what at at some point it's either you put both titles on the line, or if you're feuding with a SmackDown person, hey, here's the universal championship. Uh I'll yeah, like I'll put that one on the line, and that's how you get it back to like 
you kind of just write yourself into a corner with this unless they're planning on doing the 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 brand unsplit uh well and I, I think what you can get away with if you do this brand unsplit, I just like calling it that because it's so That's wrong. what we're calling it. Like, yeah, like, English. Let's yeah. get t-shirts made. T-shirts made. Brand <laughs> unsplit. Brand unsplit. <laughs> just super glue Ron Smackdown together in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> um, rock down. <laughs> um, but I think what you can do is, it, so I agree that, that there does get to a point where it's really hard to write for those people on how do you advance them. I think say you have, say Brock wins this. And I don't want it to happen, but let's say Brock wins this and he's champion. And he goes back to Raw and Lashley, for some reason, thinks he deserves a match. And they start having the storyline together. On SmackDown, what you can do is have people fighting for that number one contender spot for their own title when it gets back to their turn. So sort of like how SmackDown and Raw used to go back and forth with who had a pay-per-view that month. Do something along those lines, because I think it worked when you went back and forth. Because you gave time, you gave eight weeks basically for a story to develop, which is plenty of time, and you can do a lot of good with eight weeks rather than forcing something four weeks match with no conclusion, four weeks match with an actual conclusion. And I think you could do something like that where you just, like I said, go back and forth to say Sammy and um, Seth Rollins want to feud together to see who deserves the number one spot. Oh, maybe Kevin Owens wants to jump in there, and that's a triple threat. I know you don't like triple threats, but just for the sake of well, yeah, you know switching I mean, if things it's up, a right triple like, threat. If it's the right, right triple threat, if it's the right fatal four-way, I hate fatal four-ways because it's even less wrestling for some people because in true. the end, it always just somehow gets to, oh, here's two guys lying outside of the ring and here's two guys, oh, we have a one-on-one for like five minutes before the th- another guy comes in and then we have a one-on-one with these two guys. Like it's, they're done. I get that. I, I get that. I don't agree with it. I love stipulation matches when it comes to those multiple people. If I get have six men in the ring at, the time, at a time, if it's logical if it's yeah, logical like, i can mess with it if but if it's if it's just me that it's working yeah. but if it's if it's you have three people in the ring and then one guy is lying outside the ring for 12 minutes just so these guys can have their own separate match and then the third guy comes in knocks one of them out now they have a 12 minute match it's like what like why do we have to have three people if they're not doing things because you can't have three people fighting each other at once you talk about this is basically what happened uh oh i'm so bad with the years i want to say it's like the 2016 and 2017 rumble of of uh punk cena and uh brock was that the trio it was cena brock and rollins i don't remember cena and punk ever having a match other than one-on-one with each other that's why i'm trying to think of who the other person in the match was it might have been rollins it was Cena, think, Rollins, and Brock. Yeah, that okay, so that's what I was thinking of. My bad. Um, like that match. Awful. Because people love that match. I can't stand it because all they did was power bomb Brock to the announce table. Literally, like you said, a 10-minute match. And then Brock was like, Oh yeah, I'm Jack as shit. And just comes in there, cleans house, and won the match. What? So like that's that's what I don't want to happen. But um to get back to our first tangent. A title unification can be done if they do it well. What makes me nervous is that it's WWE, and in the end, it's just not going to turn out well. I don't know how they're going to handle this at at WrestleMania because it can only work. There's such a large, large margin of error that could happen. You could they could really bombshell this depending on how they go about it. But there's that sliver that if they get it right, it might make WWE. Not exactly competitive with AEW again. I'm not talking about money wise because obviously it's way different. But I mean, just as far as enjoyable entertainment on TV, I think they can get to that point again if they really do WrestleMania right this year. I think this WrestleMania is going to be more important than anything because mainly they've been in the uh, uh, pandemic era or the the Superdome, or Thunderdome era, whatever they called it. I, I think if they do this right, this could put WWE back on track. But if it goes wrong, I am seriously going to rethink whether I can, I'm going to keep my Peacock subscription. <laughs> we're, we're winding down right now. And I want to bring me, bring us to our last point that I wanted to bring up. And you kind of had a nice little transition there. What do we have for WrestleMania this year? WrestleMania is six weeks away. And really the only three matches, That's three it. confirmed matches. That's it. Oh, Unless you want to talk about, uh, you bring up Sami Zayn and 
Johnny Knoxville, which is being heavily rumored for the IC title. I Again, guess that's not confirmed. But... Six weeks away, we have three confirmed matches. Right. And I'm excited for one of them. Well, that's not true. I'm I think I'm excited for Brock and Roman because I think it can be good, but it's like what we've all been talking about is what's gonna come of it. If they if they do it right and they build it right, as long as long as Brock doesn't win, as long as Brock doesn't win with Heyman flip-flopping again. And as long as Roman doesn't win via interference from Heyman. Or the Usos. Or the Usos. As long as it's none of those three, if it is a good, clean match, I will be I, I will I will stop my complaining as long and then like the most important thing, if this doesn't happen, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I was gonna lead up to that and say that that actually is, but if the rock doesn't come out. I'll be pissed. But now if the rock comes out and they set up a match for next year's WrestleMania, I'll be pissed even more because I hate that because then it's just like, well, now, you know, Roman's not losing for a year, like set up a SummerSlam or something. like. God. And that's my biggest issue with all this is yes, I would love the rock to come back. He is my, he is my all time favorite wrestler. And I would, mar- and I mark up for him. I will pop every time I hear the beginning of his intro. But like you said, I do not want to have the same situation we are having with Brock, where we knew from SummerSlam to now that it was going to be those two at Mania. Now you're telling me we're going to have to wait a whole year for this to happen, and maybe in between Roman loses the title, and he comes back and he gets the title back probably before the next Mania. If they do it well, it could be phenomenal. But it's... Oh, like you, we're in a like WrestleMania you, 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 29 situation right now. Yeah. Where, where basically, yeah. you know, the Royal Rumble that year, you knew Punk was losing it to The Rock. And when Punk originally won, it's just like, holy crap, they have Punk winning it. Let's be, I'm excited for this Royal Rumble. And then Vince comes out, it's like, nope, we're restarting this match. And The Rock's winning it. And John Cena's winning the Royal Rumble. Awesome. Uh, don't get me wrong, that match at Mania was good, but it wasn't once in a lifetime. Yeah. It was twice in a lifetime. Uh, but it's just like, yeah, not like it, I want The Rock to come back. You don't have to have a name like that for WrestleMania. You don't. No. Have you you have Roman continue his reign? Yeah, Roman continue his Roman's reign. Roman's reign. Uh, <laughs> uh, face The Rock at SummerSlam. Now the tribal chief is the tribal chief head of the table where he has beaten the greatest Samoan wrestler of all time. At least in my opinion, as a non Samoan. I put Rikishi up there, but whatever. Deep throne. Rikishi, Yokozuna, Roman Reigns. I'm talking about The Rock. Oh. As the best Samoan wrestler of all time. Subjective. Okay. Uh I'd rather (laughs) dig a stink face than a people's elbow. I think that's more devastating. To be fair, because we've talked about it, the people's elbow is one of the worst, the dumbest finishing move of all time. Uh, (laughs) Anyway, anyway, we're getting sidetracked. But then you have Roman beat The Rock. Now he literally has beat he and Alexander wept because he had no nothing left to conquer. Like that's what Roman will be if he beats The Rock at SummerSlam. Then you build whoever the hell is going to beat Roman at Mania next year. But what do they do in the meantime? So say that's the plan. Let's go with that as the plan. There's nobody else. That, that's the that's, that's it. That's the main. That's the point that I brought up earlier. There is no one on this roster who is a title threat. It's, that's why I'm thinking it's got to be Brock. Brock has to win at Mania because there really, truly, is nobody that's believable enough to beat Roman. That's why I've been so unfortunately dead set that I think Brock's going to win. The one thing that I'm kind of curious for. And is the closest thing I have to excitement right now is to see this build up and see what they do and see if something changes in that main event. Because as of right now, I'm I'm mad and I'm I'm not excited because it's I don't see anything happening and I don't see them changing anything. But but 
I have that small shred of hope that something because what happened to Roman versus Rollins? There's there's so uh, much more that could yeah. have happened there. They could have had Roman versus Rollins part two at Elimination Chamber. They had a great match the first time around. There's no reason not to exactly. Honestly. And now, like, Rollins never tapped out. He didn't get his fair title shot. There's so much more psychological warfare he could have implemented. And you put it at Elimination Chamber, not Goldberg. I get why they did Goldberg. But put Goldberg versus Bobby Lashley. Like, something like that. Like, Yeah, even then, I don't know. But, but wasn't there talks relatively recently? Like, I'm talking about within, within the last few months – there was rumors that they were going to stick Rollin into the triple threat match with him, Brock, and uh, Reigns. Am I making that up, or did I've I? I've seen that. I that's what that? I want. Like that, right? That, but that's, like, the, that's it. Realistically, do we think that Rollins could really be like? Obviously, we're talking kayfabe. Do we really think that Rollins would have a chance against Brock and Roman? Like, I get that. I get he's beaten both of them at one point or the other. But you're talking about now two of the most dominant champions in WWE history, other than Bruno, Bruno San Martino. Like, I, I don't know how Bruno San Martino or JPL or <laughs> Punk. Come on, what? I'm listing long champions. You're missing literally like this. Well, I guess Bob Backlund, I think, is technically number two. But oh yeah. Who, <laughs> I'm having such who, a brain fart. <laughs> who must pose? Who must pose? Edge and Christian. Oh, fuck all. Oh, it, I, you can, I don't <laughs> I know, care I know what your saying. personal yeah. reasons are for him, but you just said Bruno San Martino and Roman Reigns when there is clearly yeah. a third person in there. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I mean Bruno San Martino did have like a seven year run though. That's eight nothing years. on Hulkster. Eight years. Eight years. Ugh. Hulk Whatever. still had like five. What's your point? No, nah, I just don't like Hulk, so I always I forget about him. I get that, but that's still. all. That's all. Still. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, as we come to it, we didn't really have a natural conclusion there, but it's just like we're just going to be talking for another three oh, hours. One thing I did want to bring up real quick before we go. Do we really think that Austin, how do we think this Austin, Stone Cold Steve Austin thing is going to play out at Mania if he shows up? It's got to, it, the only logical match, because they're going to do some BS for us probably. Again, like that's, that's the dumb thing. That's the dumb, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is why I said we could talk for another three hours. Uh, uh. Like, as a like, you try to be a WWE fan, like I try, I try, I held out so long, but they make it so hard. It makes me as a fan where it's just like, this is the logical explanation. There's no reason they can do anything other than this. But then in the back of your mind, it starts to come to the front that it's just like, but I'm a smart WWE fan who's been a WWE fan for a long time. I know that they're not going to do, they're going to somehow mess it up. They're going to somehow do Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Logan Paul. Like, which that's oh, the thing. They also still have that rumor where they said they have another announcement that's like a Stone Cold Steve Austin level announcement. And I don't know if it's been made yet or, and I don't know, I'm scared as to I, who or what it can be. Are they talking about possibly Rock coming back and challenging Roman after his match? I mean, that's the only... If you're I'm, talking pretty sure they, level, I'm pretty sure it's a pre-Mania announcement. Like something for the... Oh. Like a Cody-level announcement. I think. But it's just like I, like, I don't know who or what it could be. But to answer your question, because I kind of went off my little tangent there, if it's not Austin versus Kevin Owens they've done it wrong there's not there, yeah. there's there's no one even if it's austin they, versus rollins which would still be fantastic it it, it no it doesn't make sense it, well, not, austin versus kevin owens is the only thing that makes sense i mean stunner versus stunner plus the fact that kevin Owens has been kind of crapping on texas anyway it just seems random there's no way that she's just like oh it's where wrestlemania is i gotta shit on it it's like no nah. There's got to be that build toward it with Austin. Um, and they're both I mean, they're both 
dicks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like it, like they're they're literally. It, it's just that it, it it it's perfect. It's serving yeah. itself up on a silver platter, and we're gonna get Stone Cold versus Austin Theory or something. No. Oh. Now here's 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 my thing. I don't want them to have a match. I don't want a match. I just want Austin to go out there, literally have have Kevin Owens talking smack about Texas in the ring. Stone Cold comes out at his ATV, whatever, and he comes out there and stuns him. I don't want to see a 60-year-old Austin in the ring because he hasn't been in the ring since his last match with Rock at WrestleMania 19. Like, 17? No, 19. 19. 19, 19. Uh, I don't think it's going to go well, and I think he's going to look clunky, and I I don't think it's going to be good for his legacy at the end of the day. I was talking to my boss, and I said... I don't, the only reason I don't want a match is because I don't want him to pull a Shawn Michaels. And Shawn Michaels said he was never going to come back. He was never going to wrestle it. Like he was retiring and he was going to stay retired unless it was like for the perfect match. And he apparently saw the perfect match as DX versus the Brothers of Destruction, um, which everyone knows how that turned out. I don't want Austin to pull that, but um for starters austin has always been bald so we don't have to worry about that um yeah that was weird bald michaels Whoa. um second again it has to be the right person and kevin owens is the right person kevin owens can make stone stone cold i mean from the matches that i've seen already kind of had a tad bit of a limited move set not like it was anything I mean, super fancy it was ground and pound style wrestling kevin owens he's agile he had he can switch it up and he can do some cool stuff for a guy his size but he also kind of has that similar kind of ground and pound style style he uses a stunner as his finisher it makes sense it yeah it's it is the it is the stunner versus stunner finisher battle that we want to see that we did not want to see in the spear versus spear goldberg roman yeah I, yeah I, I and that's you brought up exactly why i'm concerned about this match the biggest point we don't want to make austin look bad he is the best character this promotion has ever seen uh i consider him number one still even though he's not my favorite wrestler and I don't, and I don't, yes, Hogan was who he was. Taker. You said, you, you said the word character. So yes, I meant oh, Taker. Taker. Okay, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. But the most, regardless, oh, fuck, lost my train of thought. Um, Sorry. No, you're good. Uh, anyway, you have this legacy that Austin has as one of the greatest of all time. And he left on the perfect match, I think. I think his, yeah. tri- his trilogy with Rock phenomenal like i said i'm a big rock fan rock lost two out of three out of those three out of three two out of three of those and he won the last one it was a great send-off and i don't uh, it just makes me so upset to think that you like you said with michaels you don't you had such a good high note that you ended him on leave the official record book out of this just let him do what he always does come out with a stunner drink a couple beers people will pop for that shit 12 times out of 10 like you just know it's gonna work it, See, it, it but now, me. now at this point, if he doesn't have a match, people are going to be more pissed off. Fuck people. We would never make people happy. The wrestling no. fans, particularly, we oh, can wrestling never be fans, happy. You will, wrestling fans will never be happy. I watch. Yeah, I mean, I I've seen throughout Twitter, and this is where we'll end. Um, I saw people tweeting that you know, die hard, like like Cody fans who were the diehard AEW people who they would crap on WWE if their life depended on it. Um, now that Cody has left, they've started to, to shit on AEW. It's just like, wh- why? What is the best? There's no way that you watched AEW solely for Cody Rhodes. And if you did, you were watching AEW for the wrong reasons. Because there mm. was so long where he wasn't even on TV. Like, 
so like yeah wrestling fans suck we suck and we just spent about three hours no two hours talking about guys in their underwear wrestling in a chamber in saudi arabia did you look up my google history (laughs) why do you know that so particularly (laughs) oh boy well this has been another fun we need to do this more often we gotta just find time to do this yeah Um, this is my one weekend off of work so like i'm (laughs) trying to utilize it to my fullest potential heck yeah i i mean once the summer comes i'm gonna be busy all the time uh um, because you know baseball and that's uh, probably the most free because basketball absolutely um <laughs> but uh it's been phil giovanni i've been david coyer we're out of time i mean we're not out of time like you said we both have the rest of the night to do it but we could talk for five more hours and just ramble i gotta watch the all-star late. game i gotta watch the all-star game that is priority tonight nba all-star game is on tonight But uh, this has been episode two of Two Guys Talking Wrestling. And who knows when episode three will come out. We might, you know, it took us this many months to do it this time. Maybe we'll just wait the whole year. (laughs) (laughs) We'll probably do a WrestleMania episode. But until then, again, that's been Phil Giovanni. I've been David Coyer. Thanks for making it this far, guys. (laughs) See ya. I love you.